You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello, and welcome to Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Solari, and today we're talking about being a source of strength for others. And I know sometimes that's hard, right? Because you might feel depleted at the end of your day. But within this show, I'm asking to just give a little bit at the end of your day or in the beginning or throughout, just to send somebody a text, you know, letting them know that you're thinking of them, that you're proud of them, that, you know, maybe recalling a memory of something you shared together. You know, it's all about inspiring those in our life to keep them going, to keep them encouraged and inspired. So we want to focus on that today. Also, in our next segment, we're going to be joined by our inspirational guest, Kevin Briggs, who, as a California Highway Patrol officer, one of his jobs was to walk the Golden Gate Bridge and to to look for people that were depressed, to kind of help them to make a better decision not to jump but look at the good in their lives. And he too has been through many, many different life challenges. So we'll be talking about that and how he is today a source of strength for others. And we want to make sure that beyond today's show that you are supported. So make sure that you go to livingfullout.com. Our blog will have articles discussing different topics and challenges to keep you in empower there. Also go to the Living Full Out page because uh, all of our episodes are waiting there for you, including this show again, if you'd like to hear it. And for those of you who are out and about, you can look out for Living Full Out Radio in your app store, or if you have an Echo Alexa, you can uh, tune in that way as well. Now we are going to be taking your calls throughout the show. In fact, our producer is saying we have a listener on the line. Let's go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. This is Amber. Hi, Amber. What's going on today? Well, recently, um, like yesterday, we just found out, my friends and I just found out that our graduation is going to be canceled. Um, But we still have to finish the semester out. We still have to take online classes and things like that. And we are completely devastated and we're mad. But, I mean, it's no one's fault. So we don't have anyone to be mad at, but we're just mad. And I just want to know, like, how can we, how can we continue to have the motivation to finish out the semester when we know that what we were looking forward to is has been snatched away from us? Absolutely. I get that. And first of all, having been someone who grabbed that diploma from the University of Oregon way back when, you know, I can appreciate, right? You You work hard for four or five years and you really scrape all the money together to get through school as well. And and then you look forward to that big day that you can have pictures and with your family. Now, one of the things I want you to think about though, and again, I've had that moment, but it isn't so much about the ceremony because that can be really long and maybe boring. (laughs) Okay. It's really, Mm -hmm. you want to, you want to capture the essence of what you've accomplished, right? So that is where you might want to consider you know, putting together your own party, maybe even a mock ceremony, right? You and your friends Mm -hmm. together, everybody comes together and it's kind of this big deal. And maybe each of you have an opportunity to talk and, you know, three, five, 10 minutes about, you know, what you enjoyed best about, you know, your university time. See, you don't get that in a ceremony, so in a ceremony, there's a, the, the normal kind, it, there's so many people, hundreds of people, thousands of people, because there's oftentimes different locations for different majors, and it's busy, and there's boxes you have to check, and all the, the gowns and the hats and all these, you know, different procedures and, you know, policy. And, you know, you don't have to do that now. You know, you're free to make this what you want. So what you might look at is, You know, having this be not so much about tradition, but more about, okay, I'm starting my professional career. I'm turning this page and it starts with my graduation into my new first job and and have that be your own way, your own path. 
Have you considered that? Yeah, I have. Now, you sound really excited about it, but <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I, I, I say you got to get excited is because if you don't, you're going to miss it. So see, when we're bummed about something in life or we're disappointed, if you stay in that space, time will keep going. It will just keep going without you. So you have the ability to either be upset and be bummed and, or you can rise above it and you can say, you know what? Okay, no graduation. I'm going to allow myself to have this weekend to, to be pity party about it. And then, you know what? I'm going to get into um, planning my own future. I'm going to put together that ceremony with my friends, that dinner. We're going to take that trip to celebrate. Just get into action mode because that vibration is what you're going to need to, to coast that wave into finding a new career. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it, you know, the way it should be. But what should things be like, right? And over time, ceremonies have changed and evolved, and online classes have happened where things to, classes used to only be in person. So this is just another part of evolving, and you're kind of the pioneer of it. Okay? okay. But thank you so much for calling in. Thanks, Nancy. Have a great day. I really appreciate that she called in about that because, well, today we're talking about being a source of strength for others. So I want you to think about in this new climate that we're in, you know, whether it be a virus or whether it be an economic, you know, meltdown, whatever it may be that we have to tackle, or maybe in your own life, it's a relationship breakdown or a loss of a job. When we, when we weather these storms, it's hard to do it by ourselves, right? You know, we feel all bundled up inside with tension. But if you release that tension by being that, that arm that you can reach out to another person and support them, then it diffuses that. It takes it out of your body because you're giving it away. So I just encourage you all to do that. Now, I'm getting word that we have another call on the line. Let's go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. Uh, my name is Olivia, and I have Hi. for you. Yes. So I am in my first year working out of college full time, and I'm still living at home. Um, unfortunately, that requires that I commute for almost four hours every day. I mean, naturally not right now because we're all, you know, social distancing. But I was wondering if you had any advice on how to optimize the time that I'm spending on my commute and how to just be the positive to getting into the city every day. Well, four hours is a lot of time, right? Now, yes. I, I, I believe in balance, okay? So somebody might say, go learn Spanish and, you know, take that time and get, you know, educational audios on, you know, and listen to them for four hours. Well, that's going to wear you out, right? You can't do that. <laughs> What you might consider is whether you're, you know, whether it's a playlist that you can establish in your car or on your phone, have different playlists that tap into where your mood might be. So you might need that playlist that gets you revved up with music or something that makes you feel successful. You might also need that playlist that calms you down, allows you to feel nourished and replenished. Now, you might also consider getting audio books on tape. You know, sometimes it might be good to have uh, something motivational in the realm of your career, but other times it might just be good to have like a, a you know, a, a fiction novel, right? Or a nonfiction novel or something that allows you to just take yourself out of your own life. Almost like watching a movie, but you're listening to it, right? Because you're commuting, you're driving. Mm -hmm. and, and find that balance. But that's the beauty of technology is we have that, 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 a way to organize ourselves. I also, because I, I gave up driving years ago, in my 40s now, gave up driving when I was 24. So I had a lot of time in different ways that I would transition around, whether it be cabs or Ubers or Lyfts or this or that. And I always took that time to catch up with people. And, you know, it, it was, it's happy hour somewhere. And it would be like, okay, <laughs> Nancy's calling. It's five o'clock. And I found myself having these little dates with people over the phone. It's Tuesday at six. Nancy's going to call. So sometimes it's really nice because you can have this, this sacred time with somebody where if you were just busy all the time and distracted and entertaining people, you wouldn't have that ability. 
So I think you try all those if you can, you know, and just make the most of your time. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I love the idea of connecting with people I have spoken to in a while, especially maybe high school friends or, or grandparents. I think that's probably a great time to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. And start that tomorrow or today. But thank you so much for calling in. And for everybody, when we come back, we'll be joined by Kevin Briggs. Again, his story is so touching, all the different things that he's overcome, as well as being a support for others who are considering leaping off the Golden Gate Bridge. It's a powerful story you don't want to miss. I'm Nancy Soleri. This is the Living Full Out Show. Today is all about being a source of strength for others. Stay with us. We'll be back. Hi, professional skateboarder Tony Hawk here with Bugs Money and Daffy Duck to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have the energy to skate through anything. <laughs> nice play on white, Doc. That's how I roll, Bugs. So whether you like to work the half pipe, now that's catching air, kick the soccer ball around, or dance in your room, just move it your way for an hour a day. The way you like to move, as long as you're moving. Carve out some time every day and get active. Because it's time to do a 180 on what you think exercise is. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. So be a player. Be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At www.letsmove.gov. Let's hear that one more time, Doc. That's www.letsmove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. I'm Nancy Soleri, Certified Life and Business Coach. I want to invite you to the Personal Development Boot Camp. During the boot camp, we're going to be looking at taking those insecurities that you have and getting rid of them. We're also going to look at ways in which you can thrive and live a life full of purpose. Go to livingfulloutcom forward slash boot camp, livingfulloutcom forward slash boot camp to sign up. I believe in you and here's to you living your life full out. I'm Sarah, and this is my story. I'm Ellen, and this is my story. One night, I was at a bar. One night, I was at a bar. I was having fun with my friends. I was having fun with my friends. I had one too many drinks. I had one too many drinks. I got behind the wheel to go home. I got a cab to go home. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. It happened so quickly, I barely had time to react. It happened so quickly, the cabbie barely had time to react. I swerved. The cab swerved. I can't believe it. I hit a guy. I cannot believe it. The cabbie just missed a guy. I wish I took a cab. Thank goodness I took a cab. You have the choice to save a life. Don't drive buzzed. It's a decision you'll never regret. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. If you think depression is all in a person's head, you're right. It's a brain illness. And like other illnesses, it has symptoms. Depression can make those who suffer from it feel hopeless. It can even lead to suicide. Learn how to stop depression from taking another life. Call SAVE, Suicide Awareness Voices of Education. 1-888-511-SAVE. On the web at save.org. I'm Alec Baldwin. Like any parent, I'm concerned about children's health. Many kids don't eat as they should and are at risk for long-term health problems like diabetes and heart disease. But here's good news. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and other low-fat vegetarian foods can protect our kids and keep the rest of the family healthy too. For a free booklet, call the Physician's Committee for Responsible Medicine at 1-877-685-KIDS or visit www.kidsgethealthy.org.
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfulloutcom Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're focusing on being a source of strength for others. And we try each week to bring you inspirational guests that really highlight the best way to do that. And gosh, Kevin Briggs, where do I even begin with the amount of things that he's overcome? But really, how he dedicated his life to spotting people as a California Highway Patrol officer who maybe were considering jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge and really being able to take all the lessons he learned in his own life and relate to those people to to give them the inspiration they need to make the right decision to live and choose to live. So I'd like to welcome Kevin to the show. Kevin, are you with us? Yes. yes Hi, there you are. Hi. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. And there is just so many hurdles, I don't know, challenges, hurdles, obstacles, tears, pains that you've that you've gone through. And I want to start with when you were 20. Because I remember when I was 16 being told I had retinitis pigmentosa, being told you're going to go blind by 40. Wow. I mean, that word just imprinted on my heart. and It was scary. And you got a big word yourself at 20. What was the first thing that you had to overcome? I did when I was 20 years old and in the Army and in Germany, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Amazing to say those words, right? Like I, I keep thinking one day we're going to get used to hearing the word cancer, but to me it still is unknown and scary, even though we've come so far. And for you, I know that was just kind of one that you had a lot of shame around. But I'm curious why. Well, people didn't talk about cancer so much back then, uh, and we didn't really talk about testicular cancer. And I was ashamed by it. That's your manhood, so to speak. Uh, I didn't know how to talk about it with folks. You know, would I be the blunt of jokes? Yeah. So I didn't talk about it. I just told people it was stomach cancer. So I was very ashamed by it for yeah. no reason, but it was just my my way. Well, and you had to go through all the different treatments, the chemo and everything to get past that point in your life and really leaning on your family, leaning on friends and family to to get you through. And when you were 26, you encountered your next loss, and that was the loss of your mom. What did she pass away from? Right. She was diagnosed with lung cancer, Mm -hmm. and she had gone through some therapies for that. It it didn't work well for her. She actually quit chemotherapy and was bedridden for quite a long time in the family home. Um, And she actually passed away uh, in front of the whole family. Today is the actual anniversary of her passing. Oh, uh, I Mama. closed her eyes. Yeah. yeah. What was her and, What was her and, name? What was her name? Judy. G- Judy. Judy. Oh, well, well yes. this show is dedicated to her. And I well, and I Thank you. I you know, it, it's I imagine it was a, a tough moment for you because you had beat cancer, but your mom did not. And I don't know how mm-hmm. one makes sense of that. You know, you can't. And and I was just 26 at the time, trying to find my way in life still. And it was just brutal to watch your mother pass away in front of you. Um, I closed your eyes. You see the last breath. You know, mm. it's, it's a horrible thing to have to go through to watch someone deteriorate like that mm. because of an illness. Well, and from, from what I know about people, all of the warriors, all the people who have gone through cancer and many, many different health conditions is, you know, it's not just a one and done. It, it's it's a journey to get back to feeling yourself again and kind of creating this new normal. And just when you felt like you had found your path, you had found your calling, you were, you know, a California Highway Patrol officer, tragedy struck again when you were in your late 30s with an accident. What happened there? Right. I was, I rode a motorcycle with the highway patrol 
and I was on a very rural road, uh, just one lane each direction, and another motorcyclist came around a corner way, way too fast. I just missed a car ahead of me, but hit me head on as I was on my motorcycle. So we had a closing speed of about 105 miles an hour. And I don't remember a whole lot about it. I was knocked out for quite some time, sustained multiple injuries, helicoptered to the hospital off duty for several months. Um, that head trauma, you know, that took a toll. Mm -hmm. So it was a very brutal, high, high speed collision. Um, and it was, it was a tough one. It really was. Well, and, and the, 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 the tough thing about an accident like that is it gives you almost too much time on the couch or in the bed to think. A lot of time to think and overthink, right? And just really wanting to get, you know, back on a path. Now, I'd love to tell everybody in our audience that, you know, Kevin won the lottery and ran off to Fiji. And that was the way the story ends. but. <laughs> It wasn't, you know, I mean, and that's, I don't know if it's the joke of life or what, but I, it, again, in your late forties, you have suffered a lot of symptoms of a heart attack. And, and why do you think that is what were you just had reached an epic stressful time in your life? It was a stressful time. Uh, I had promoted to the rank of sergeant and I had to leave my area of Marin, and I went over to the East Bay over by Oakland, just south of there, a place called Hayward. And I was working graveyards, which I never really did as an officer. And I was in charge of 10 to 15 officers in an area where these are all brand new officers, uh, in an area where there's a lot of nice people, but there's a lot of gangs and a lot of violence, too, there. So all of this, plus, I think I just had poor genes when it, when it comes to the heart. At least that's what the doctors tell me. So I had some signs and symptoms that I didn't put together for several days. But when I finally did go to the doctor, uh, my EKG was fine. But they did a blood test, thank God. And, and the, that came back very poor. And I mean, the heart puts out an enzyme when it's not functioning properly. And my enzyme levels were, were very high. So I had to stay in the hospital for some time. And I had three different operations through the femoral arteries and, and some stents put in my heart. You know, Kevin, I, I, I don't know why. I, 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 you know, with the cancer at 20, with the loss of your mom, with the motorcycle accident, you know, with the, the, the heart attack, with so many different things, it it's, boggles my mind why good things, well, bad things, I should say, happen to good people. And you kind of fall in that category because when we come back, I want to talk about oh, the good of you the loving, inspirational you that really, despite all of that that you went through, you really gave it over to other people. You inspired them to make a, a better decision not to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. So that's a big one. I want you to stay with us. And when everybody comes back, um, I, I want us to really think about, you know, where in our life can we be a source of strength for people? And really come away from this show knowing that you're going to pick up that call and reach out to one person today. So I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We're talking to Kevin Briggs, and we'll be coming right back, talking about being a source of strength for others. Stay with us. We'll be back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. There are many sounds in your day-to-day -day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, 
my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want and we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Solari, and today we're focusing on being a source of strength for others and really finding that opportunity to give, to lend a listening ear, to have empathy for what someone is going through, and most of all, to find the words of wisdom to help others make a better decision than they might otherwise, you know, left to their own devices. And our inspirational guest today, Kevin Briggs, did just that times 10. I mean, what an amazing person for all that he has overcome, but yet that giving nature. So I'd like to welcome Kevin back to the show. Thank you, Nancy. Now, Kevin, you, aside from all the things that you overcame in your life, which we talked about, you know, the cancer, the loss of your mom, your motorcycle accident, you know, the the, almost a heart attack, all the symptoms of a heart attack. And when you were working the Golden Gate Bridge as a California Highway Patrol officer, what did you look for? How did you know that people were contemplating or thinking about jumping? Um, first, I'll start with you know that the bridge is the number one spot in the United States for loss of life to suicide. And mind you, I lived in Marin, which connects to the bridge, and I never knew this. 
at all before I started working on the bridge. But, and I had no training in this. So it was very, very tough. But what I found out and what I learned, you know, was to look for folks. Most of the time they were solo. They were by themselves. And they'd be pacing back and forth for some time. Most of the people. Uh, and I just simply watched them to see what was going on. What do, and then approach them. Um, if we could get them before they went over that four-foot pedestrian rail and talk to them to see what is going on, if they're taking pictures, if they're not, try to figure out what is going on in their day, what has been happening with them. Sometimes they'll open up and talk to me, and then other times they wouldn't. I just wanted to be left alone. They want to contemplate what they're thinking they're doing. So, and it, and it's interesting because... Some people, you were able to give them those pearls of wisdom and, and, the, and the insight to, to make a different decision and not to jump. And others did jump right in front of you. And I don't even know how one processes that. I mean, you know, how do you go from thinking, could I have said or done anything differently to if I just got here 10 minutes earlier? But also, what if I wasn't here? You know? And that's what I look at. And when I teach others uh, doing negotiations is what I tell them also. Um, we lose some, and that's the way it is. You know, it's horrible, and it's, and it's a bad thing to even think about. But we think about how many folks we've helped. That helps us get through the part, the, the really horrible part of losing people. Because I will tell you, the majority of the time, if we get a chance to come and speak to someone, we can get them back over the rail. And there's no miracle work here. It's simply being there for an individual who's hurting and probably been hurting for quite some time. What can we do to be there for them? You know, by normalizing what they're going through, by validating what they've been going through and trying to find maybe a purpose or a reason for them to continue, at least continue on for that day. Yeah. You know, all the different things that you encountered, the cancer, the loss of your mom, the motorcycle accident, all of those came with stress and anxiety and worries. I'm sure many, many sleepless nights. Um, but 10 years ago, you actually were given another big word, put cancer aside. What was that word? Right. With, with all these big deals that were going on, um, mental illness, I was diagnosed with depression. Mm -hmm. and I didn't realize it, what I had been going through, but I could go to work and be great. Everything's fine. But when I went home, it's when things really hit me, when things calmed down, I didn't want to do anything. I could sit on a couch for days at a time, and I couldn't, I did not put these together, what was going on with me, uh, until I was diagnosed with this. And how did they diagnose you? How, do you, how does one get diagnosed with depression? With me, um, it was simply going to my regular doctor, a routine physical, but telling them, Doc, something's going on. Because when I'm at home, I'm, I don't want to do anything. I don't even want to leave my house. When I'm at work, I'm fine. So many, many states have this simple test. It's called the PHQ-9 Personal Health Questionnaire, Patient Health Questionnaire 9. And it's just nine questions about how are you doing? Do you enjoy life and different things? So that's what he had me take. And I would tell folks, answer it truthfully. You know, mm -hmm. what's going on with you? Really think about it. And uh, he looked at this and came back in the room and, and diagnosed me with depression. Well, what I think is so kind of ironic is for all the times that you were working the beat on the bridge and looking for people that may have been suicidal and obviously depressed in their own way, here you were going through your own bout with depression and actually being diagnosed with it. And what have you found over the years that has helped you to manage being depressed or, or, or not going into the depths of it on those really hard days? I think being able to pull up my own bootstraps when I can. I have this quality of life triad that I've developed, but self-care. What helps me out? I, I have this little chihuahua that really helps me with stress. Um, I try to go to the gym when I can, eating healthy. All the things that we hear about are actually true and they're real. Um, needing to get outside. Sometimes I have a very difficult time, whether 
whether that's anxiety or this depression, even stepping outside. I know I'm going to have these bad mental health days, but I know they'll pass. So simply by forcing myself to get out and take a walk can really, really help. But that's well, self-care on one side. Oh, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think the self-care is important. But I also think there's a lot of fear around those words, depression, mental health. Like if you say something, somebody might break up with you. You might lose your job. You know, did you go through that same fear? I did. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why I didn't seek help and talk about it. So that's where another critical part of this is your support system. Uh, Your friends are going to stick by you. I thought I might lose friends, lose my job, but nothing like that happened. I actually have a great support system now, made wonderful friends, and and also the professional care. And I'm not just talking about a psychiatrist or psychologist or someone in the mental health field, but those of a profession that can help you, whether it's a yoga instructor, a life coach as yourself, someone that we can lean on. So between the self-care, the support, and the professional care, those are big aspects in my life that I look at daily. It's really amazing. It's almost full circle because of all the different things that you went through in your own personal life. And I know that the depression was probably seeded throughout each of those moments, right? I think the different health issues and losses that you had and just getting to that place of, I'm you know, sick and tired of being sick and tired. I mean, you were on the couch more times than one should be in recovery. And then obviously being that person to, you know, inspire others to not jump off the bridge. But then all of a sudden, just within the last 10 years, given your own depression diagnosis, is that, do you think this is the purpose of your life? Because one might say the purpose was to do what you did on the bridge. But what do you think your purpose is now? Because you got diagnosed with depression even after that time, helping people off the bridge. Right. I believe, and what I like to look at is, is helping people now. What can I do? And it's one of, one of the reasons why I left the highway patrol is how can I take what has happened to me, my experiences both on the job and off the job, and help others? So now I get this opportunity to travel and present. And I talk about my own life, what has happened, but then again, how can we help others? What do we say? What do we not say? You know, what can we do to be there for them and have a better understanding of mental illness? Because we're still losing a lot of people to suicides. Homicides in this country are down, traffic accident deaths are down, but suicides are still going up. We have a Mm. lot of work to do. Yeah, and you said a key word right there, listening. And I think that that is the biggest gift that you can give away. And I think that for me, I listen to people all day long, you know, callers or coaching clients. And for you, it was listening to people, whether you are on the bridge or doing other things as a patrol officer. And, and, you know, what final advice do you have for our audience today, you know, on if they're feeling suicidal themselves, what should they do? help. Really, seek help. Uh, People look at it as a shameful thing. It's not. It's a condition. And there is help for that, whether that's medication, whether that's talk therapy. There's a lot of different things out there. But talk with your friends, talk with your loved ones, and, you know, get some help. Look at your own self-care. You are valued. You have value. You are very, very important. We all have aspects in our life that are very, very tough, that it's tough to go through some certain things, we're not going to be up all the time. We're simply not. We're going to get kicked down. But the thing is to know that these times can and will pass, and they can and will get better. Sometimes it's a little more struggle than others. But there's help out there. Please put yourself on top. Really, that self-care is so important. I love it. And you know what? Honestly, those words are real for you because you've lived it and you've encouraged other people through it. So thank you so much, Kevin, for being on our show today and being that source of strength for others. And uh, we'll be wishing you all the best every day. Okay. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Nancy. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And for everybody listening, I mean, we are so honored to have Kevin today to talk about such a 
really difficult topic, but we've all gone through things and we want to invite you to reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. If there's an event in your life, an accident, a tragedy, if you've been battling your own health condition, you know, whatever it could be, even a phobia or sexual harassment or infertility, so many stressful moments in life that you can bring to this community and inspire us and and share with us how you got through it. So connect at livingfullout.com is where you can go there. And again, we're going to be coming back, taking your calls. So reach out to us at 800-333-0001. I am Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. And remember to do one thing today to be a source of strength to others, to help get them through a really hard time so they can live full out. We will be back. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. So many comments on my comment. Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Mom, what? Huh? Pew, pew. What'd you say? This huh? weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. It's against my religion. I'm giving my dog a bath. You can have pictures of that. Pressure gives me hives. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. Hold on, let me ask my mom. Sorry, my webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. Unfortunately, I just had my clothes surgically attached to my body. If they got out, I might never be president. I'm already naked, under my clothes. Not even if you were all three Jonas Brothers. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. The more you ask, the less I want to. You're not the boss of me. Nudity makes me vomit. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that's not cool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a, warm place on a, cold I day. Be a football I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. What? What about our plan to win the lottery and start living? You know, travel the world on matching yachts. Wear enough jewelry to require a bodyguard. Vacation on the French Riviera. And then buy it. You know we're never going to win the lottery, right? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. 
When attempting to be a source of strength for others, you want to number one, listen. Hear them out, understand what is the problem they're facing, then help them get into solution mode. Maybe even take it upon yourself to resource different solutions and and things to help get them over that hurdle. Together we can live full out by supporting each other. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we'll be talking about being a support strength for for others, right? Like, how do you do that? How do you muster the energy on days that you're having a hard day? You know, how do you identify, you know, what to say to someone? Because you might fear you might say the wrong thing. It's better just to at least try, at least open the doors of communication, at least offer to do something. They can always say no, but it's the offering, it's the asking, it's the listening that allows the other person to say, yeah, thank you for noticing, or yeah, I I do need help. And so I just encourage beyond today's show for everybody to just pick up the phone. If, If someone lives near you, go see them and just be that source of strength. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Um, hi. Hi, thank you for calling. How can we help you? Sure. I, I had a, a question. Um, what What are some of the ways to determine whether you should put your own needs aside to be there for others or whether you should take care of yourself? And I'm especially thinking about sometimes um, the other person can be really demanding. Um, they may not think they are, but they're really asking more of you than you feel like you can give or want to give. And their need might be really real, but it's kind of overwhelming. I hear you. I hear. It's kind of like when you're on a plane, right? They say put the oxygen (laughs) mask on yourself first, right? Exactly. But you don't want the person in the seat next to you to die. You don't want them to die either. Exactly. So it's a fine fine balance. But you you can't give what you don't have. So the number one thing is there's going to be days where you have more to give. You're, you're feeling pretty good. Everything's kind of going your way. And maybe maybe very rarely things go well for that person. So maybe they're, you know, on a regular basis coming to you for help. So, it sounds like that's the case. Sounds like they're demanding because they have more hurdles than you might have. But you right. have I to think honor. they're on legitimate needs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But you have to honor your own space as well. And I believe in the power of team. Okay, so while you are that outlet for that person, maybe it's physical in the sense that you help them get do errands or or maybe you help them out at home or whatever that is. Maybe it's emotional and, and you, you, you're you clearly a good listener. You're clearly a good friend, but at the same time, again, can't give what you don't have on a day that's hard for you. Consider helping that person identify others in their life That can be other go-tos besides you. It's always good to have backup. Backup people Mm -hmm. for the physical needs and the emotional needs. Now, because they're in their life, they're deep in it. Sometimes when we're in our life and we're in conflict, we can't see the possibilities. We can't see the resources. We can't identify those teammates. So you want to help coach them on that. You're their coach, right? You help them identify, okay, on the day that you are needing to get somewhere and I can't help you, let's consider maybe three people that you could call if I cannot. And then just kind of brainstorm who those three people might mm. be. And if you feel like that's not enough, well, then be there right beside them. Call those people and tell them maybe what you do for that person when you do help them. And and and, and that that takes away the need for them to make that call or they might put it off. That same goes for the emotional support. If you're that person that gives emotional support, have them think about, okay, who else is a good listener like I am? Who else has been where you've been and where I've been and, and they would relate to you? 
Let's come up with two to four people, okay? Now let's call them together or let's write an email together and just kind of give them a heads up. That would be a great use of your time with them and take some of the stress off of you. Can you try that? Yeah, I think that's a terrific idea. Thank you. You're very welcome. And you know what? Just keep being you, but I think you're spot on to honor your time and honor your needs as well. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. And for everybody listening, we so appreciate you each week. And we have here in the studio, we have Rich and Eilish and Mira and Neva and Caleb and so many people that just want to make sure that you are living your best life. But boy, there are some hard days, right? So how do we get through the hard days? We ask for help. How do we ask for help? We be a little bit vulnerable, a little bit transparent than we might normally be. Because remember, people are not mind readers. At the same time, look for signs of people who are depressed. Look for moments where you can give. That's what it means to live full out. If you need to hear this show again, go to livingfullout.com. Check us out on social media. Again, if you're on the go, your Alexa or uh, the App Store. Most of all, know that I believe in you very much. Life is a journey. Just cherish the good times and the bad because that's when we get the lessons. That's when we learn. Again, reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com if you want to be a guest on our show or if you need resources on today's topic. Here's to all of you living your life full out. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.